Greetings from my side. I am Dr. Vivek Sharma, and today we are going to talk about the anterior pituitary hormones part two. In the part one, we covered growth hormone in detail, and today we are going to discuss and touch upon all the other hormones that are secreted from the anterior pituitary. So first hormone that we are going to discuss today is the prolactin hormone. Prolactin is called as the hormone for the milk synthesis. The source of prolactin hormone is the lactotrophs that are present in the anterior pituitary. Structurally, it is a polypeptide containing 198 amino acids with a molecular weight of 23,000. And importantly, the structurally it is similar. It is similar to the human growth hormone. and it also acts like human growth hormone via the jet stat pathway so plasma prolactin concentration is 5 to 9, 8 nanograms per ml the important thing to remember is that all other hormones that are released from the anterior pituitary they are stimulated by the releasing factor from the hypothalamus but in the case of prolactin what do we see that prolactin has an inhibitory tonic control over the release of prolactin hormone from anterior pituitary therefore except prolactin adenohypophyseal hormones are under the stimulatory hypothalamic control just like any other polypeptide hormone it is synthesized as pre pro prolactin converted to pro prolactin and then ultimately in the mature form prolactin hormone is synthesized and released now come to coming to the main factors that cause the release of the prolactin secretion or increase the prolactin secretion the foremost factor is the breastfeeding so and also the prolactin releasing factor released from hypothalamus then there in another important factor is thyroid releasing hormone again from hypothalamus then there can be other factors like sleep and stress and angiotensin 2 now oxytocin is the hormone that causes the contraction of myoepithelial cells of the mammary gland or the breast tissue and this also causes the stimulation of the prolactin hormone secretion that ultimately causes the milk synthesis therefore the milk synthesis and its ejection they they keep on increasing during the lactational period there is also the the effect of serotonin opioids and importantly dopamine antagonists or dopamine blockers are going to cause the inhibition of the prolactin secretion so coming to the factors that decrease the prolactin secretion mainly they are the dopamine analogs somatostatin and gaba somatostatin is released from the hypothalamus so how is it regulated as we have just discussed hypothalamus overall has a net negative control over the anterior pituitary lactotrophs and these lactotrophs they cause the secretion of prolactin hormone so the inhibitory control is via the dopamine and somatostatin and the stimulatory control on the lactotrophs is via the prolactin releasing factor and the thyroid releasing hormone so whenever the prolactin is increased then ultimately this prolactin is going to cause the stimulation of hypothalamus and we know that the hypothalamus has a net control negative tonic control therefore it will like any in any other system physiological system we find that it feeds on to its own inhibition uh, and ultimately prolactin causes the stimulation of the lactogenesis and also plays an important part in the reproductive function so coming on to the physiological effects the main physiological effect of prolactin hormone is that it stimulates the milk synthesis it also causes the development of the mammary gland in the breast tissue it causes the hyperplasia of the breast tissue before and after puberty and it further causes it especially during the pregnancy and the lactational period along with the other sex hormones like estrogen progesterone and also cortisol and growth hormone it causes the proliferation of the ducts and lobules of the alveoli of mammary gland and during lactation along with other hormones like insulin and cortisol it causes an increase of the milk synthesis and secretion from the mammary gland now effects on reproduction there is increase the increased prolactin ultimately causes the inhibition of the gonadotropin releasing hormone 
which causes the stimulation of the release of the LH and FSH. So when this increased prolactin will cause inhibition of the uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone during the lactational during the lactational period it leads to the amenorrhea uh, and this is primarily because there will be an inhibition of both the release of the LH and FSH due to the inhibition of GnRH hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone so it, there will be prevention of the ovulation and that causes the amenorrhea in the lactating mothers there is also stimulation of the maternal behavior in the women in the males it has a mild effect of causing a decrease in the spermatogenesis now coming on to the effect on liver it causes increase in the synthesis of the growth factor called as synlactin from the liver and synlactin has the structural similarity to the somatomedins and they are also functionally analogous to protein therefore prolactin indirectly causes the stimulation of the growth coming to an important uh, applied aspect amenorrhea galactorrhea syndrome so lactotroph we know that causes the stimulation uh, lactotroph causes the synthesis of the prolactin hormone so whenever there are lactotroph tumors they will cause there will be enhanced production of the prolactin and this hyperprolactinemia is going to cause the complete inhibition of the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone leading to the amenorrhea infertility and so this can lead to the increased milk secretion even in the absence of the pregnancy and the postpartum period the diagnosis is made by finding out the high plasma prolactin levels and demonstration of the tumor of the lactotroph by ct or mri scan and the treatment now the treatment will be like we know that dopamine drugs they cause the inhibition of the release of the prolactin hormone and therefore the analogs are given hyperprolactinemia now 15 to 20 percent of the women with secondary amenorrhea have elevated prolactin levels and this prolactin will produce amenorrhea by blocking the action of the gonadotropins on the ovaries as we have seen in the previous slides now uh, in when the prolactin level is very high in males it can also be associated with the impotence coming to the next hormone thyroid stimulating hormone structurally it is a glycoprotein with 211 amino acids it controls the growth and function of the thyroid gland this TSH is secreted from the thyrotrophs of the anterior pituitary and average plasma level is 0.3 to 0.5 milli international units per liter now this tsh action is controlled by the thyroid releasing hormone this is released from the hypothalamus then there is also the inhibitory control by the hypothalamus through somatostatin and dopamine that we will talk in few slides later coming on to the uh, one applied aspect why placental tumors can give rise to hypothyroidism in some conditions so TSH as we know is made up of it is a glycoprotein made up of two subunits alpha and beta and TSH alpha subunit is identical to the alpha subunit of LH, FSH and the human chorionic gonadotropin HCG and the specificity of the TSH is conferred by mainly the beta subunit although the alpha subunit structure is nearly same as that of the LH, FSH and HCG. Therefore, since this alpha subunit in HCG is same as that in TSH, large amounts of the HCG can be released in the tumors and these can re activate the thyroid receptors. Therefore, in some patients with the benign or the malignant placental tumors, high plasma HCG levels can produce hyperthyroidism. So what is the mechanism of action of the thyroid stimulating hormone? Thyroid stimulating hormone exerts its effect on the thyroid cells by activating the cyclic AMP pathway and also the phospholipase C pathway. Now, the influence of the thyroid stimulating hormone is essentially on nearly all the steps related to the hormone synthesis, that is, through the iodide trapping, organification, coupling, endocytosis of thyroglobulin, proteolysis of thyroglobulin and ultimately when there is 
very high level of the TSH, it can even lead to the hyperplasia of the gland. We have discussed all these steps in details in the lecture on thyroid gland physiology. Functions of TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone promotes the growth of thyroid gland. It stimulates the thyroid hormone synthesis and secretion and it facilitates all the steps of thyroid hormone synthesis. And uh, importantly, measurement of TSH level is one of the best tests of thyroid function. So let's see how the control occurs. The hypothalamus causes the release of this inhibitory and as well as the stimulatory factors. So the stimulatory factor is hypothalamus causes the release of thyrotropin releasing hormone and then this will come onto the anterior pituitary and it will cause the stimulation of the release of thyroid stimulating hormone. Hypothalamus also causes the release of somatostatin and dopamine that cause the inhibition of the release of TSH from anterior pituitary but main control is stimulatory in nature. So whenever TRH is, is released we will find that TSH is released that will act on the thyroid gland and will cause the release of the T3 and T4 hormone. When this T3 and T4 hormones they go into the blood they will cause the inhibition at both the levels at the level of the anterior pituitary and as well as level of the hypothalamus leading to the inhibition of the further synthesis. So this negative feedback inhibition plays an important role in the regulation of the thyroid hormones T3 and T4 via the TSH. Now importantly we should remember that it is rather the circulating T3 than T4 which is the principal feedback regulator of the TSH secretion. Coming to the applied physiology, decreased secretion of TSH due to the pituitary diseases results in the thyroid atrophy and decreased secretion of the thyroid hormone called as the hypothyroidism. And the persistent increase in the TSH leads to the hypertrophy of the thyroid gland which is generally called as the goiter. Coming to next hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH hormone. It is a 39 amino acid single chain polypeptide secreted from the corticotropes of the anterior pituitary and uh, synthesis is that it is, it is uh, synthesized from the pro opiomelanocortin POMC pro hormone which uh, in the corticotropes is metabolized as ACTH, beta LPH and beta endorphin and mainly it produces ACTH hormone. So what are its what are its main functions and it, how is it regulated? Uh, ACTH controls the growth and secretion of the adrenal cortex. It is also used as a medication and the diagnostic agent. ACTH is stimulated by the stress which can be any sort of the stress for example the infection or the low blood sugar level or trauma and it mediates the adaptive response of the individual to the stress. So whatever the stress, it can be internal stress or it can be any other form of the psychological stress, ultimately it helps us to adapt to that sort of the stress. Now another uh, important thing that we should know is the concept of adrenal responsiveness. ACTH increases the glucocorticoid secretion by causing the stimulation of the adrenal cortex and the sensitivity of the adrenal gland to the subsequent doses of the ACTH. Therefore, no increase in glucocoid secretion occurs with the single dose of the ACTH in the chronically hypophysectomized animals and repeat injections are necessary to restore the normal adrenal responses to ACTH. In nutshell, we need ACTH hormone if we want that there should be a response to the adrenal response to the ACTH. That means the adrenal cortex should secrete more and more of the glucocorticoids. 75% of the daily production of ACTH occurs in the early hours that is between the 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. And what we can clearly appreciate from here is that it is secreted in the irregular bursts throughout the day. So there are fluctuations in the plasma ACTH and glucocorticoids throughout the day in a normal adult 
there is a diurnal variation in the secretion and most of it is produced in the early morning between the 4 am to 10 am so what are the functions it stimulates the synthesis and secretion of the glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex now ACTH also has intrinsic uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone activity therefore it stimulates the melanocytes uh, growth and their activity leading to the pigmentation. ACTH receptors are also present in the brain and GIT where it acts as a neurotransmitter. It also controls the cytokine secretion from the lymphocytes and therefore it also influences our immunity. So let's study the feedback regulation of the ACTH. So there can be multiple pathways lie up from the uh, from the nucleus of tractor solitarius or nociceptive or any sort of the trauma or the circadian rhythm. They ultimately cause the stimulation of the hypothalamus to cause the release of this corticotropin releasing hormone that acts on the anterior pituitary to cause the release of ACTH. ACTH is then going to cause is going to effect mediate its effect on the adrenal cortex leading to the release of various hormones and then they will cause the inhibition of the ACTH release from the anterior pituitary via the feedback inhibition. And this, these uh, glucocorticoids and other hormones which are secreted from the glomerulosa, fasciculata and reticularis, they are going to mediate their effect onto the body. The what we can see, we can appreciate over here is that there is inhibition both at the anterior pituitary and both at the, the at the hypothalamic level. Factors that increase the ACTH secretion, number one is foremost is the CRH. Another one that we need to remember is the stress. So any form of the anxiety, depression or the sleep-wake transition, these are the factors which will cause an increase in the ACTH secretion. There can be other factors like serotonin, acetylcholine and GI hormones that also increase the ACTH secretion. Factors that inhibit the ACTH secretion is primarily that you know the negative feedback inhibition via the glucocorticoids is going to cause the inhibition of its own of the secretion of ACTH and as well as the inhibition of the CRH. Then somatostatin, GABA, then brain natriuretic peptide or the opioids. So now let us discuss a little bit about the gonadotropin hormones. These are called as the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone. Hypothalamus causes the release of the gonadotropin releasing hormone and which acts on the anterior pituitary to act to cause the release of FSH or follicle stimulating hormone which is a, which is a 32,000 molecular weight glycoprotein and the other hormone that is released from anterior pituitary is luteinizing hormone which is 30,000 molecular weight. Now these hormones gonadotropins they regulate the growth and development of the gonads, pubertal maturation and stimulate the synthesis of the sex steroids. First uh, coming to the follicle stimulating hormone, in males it supports the spermatogenesis and has trophic influence on seminiferous tubules. In both genders, it controls the oogenesis and the spermatogenesis in females and males respectively. In females, it causes increased follicular growth, ovum development and estrogen secretion. Importantly, the absence of the FSH causes the testicular and the ovarian atrophy. And the granulosa cells of the ovary and Sertoli cells of the testis synthesize and secrete the substance called as inhibin B, which is mainly regulated in the feedback inhibition of FSH. We'll come to that. Coming to luteinizing hormone, in males, it stimulates the testosterone secretion from the interstitial cells or the Leydig cells, and these are called as the interstitial cell stimulating hormone or ICSH. And in females, it induces the pre-ovulatory swelling of the ripe graphene follicle and triggers the ovulation, followed by the luteinization of the ruptured follicle. 
Alleged search, which primarily occurs nearly 36 hours or so, starts nearly 36 hours or so, is involved in the ovulation process. Uh, and it will be further talked to talk with you in detail in the lectures on the reproductive cycle. It stimulates the theca cells to produce the estrogen. It sustains the corpus luteum till the next menstrual cycle and is responsible for the atresia of the remaining follicle. So, how is it that GnRH can cause the release of two different hormones FSH and LH? It is primarily based on to the frequency of the release of the gonadotropin releasing hormone. GnRH is released in the pulses when the pulses are of very high frequency that leads to the synthesis of the FSH hormone. When the pulses are of low frequency, then they cause, they primarily cause the release of the luteinizing hormone and then they, they control back the GnRH via the negative feedback regulation. So it is the frequency and also the amplitude of the release that ultimately determines whether FSH, LH both will be released and the amount of these two hormones. So ultimately various factors like the dopamine and dopamine's prolactin will cause both inhibition and as well as the stimulation and emotional and psychological factors. Ultimately they all will feed back onto the hypothalamus and if the need is there then hypothalamus causes the release of the gonadotropin releasing hormone that will act on to the anterior pituitary gonadotropin cells will, and they will cause the release of FSH and LH. Now these will then reach to the gonads, uh, ovaries in females and testes in the males and they cause the production of various substances like activin and inhibin, primarily the inhibins. Inhibins are again of two types, inhibin A and B. So main role is played by inhibin B. And then these inhibin, they also cause the production of the sex hormones that is the testosterone and the estrogen hormones. So these activin and inhibin will cause the feedback inhibition both at the level of the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus leading to the feedback regulation of FSH and LH. Now let's see in males. So in males, GnRH is secreted from the hypothalamus that is then uh, that uh, stimulates the release of LH and FSH from the pituitary. Then ultimately it will act on to the intergonads, it acts on the Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells will produce inhibin, primarily the inhibin B that is produced will cause the feedback inhibition of the FSH itself. Ladic cells which are produced, LH will produce, will stimulate the Ladic cells to cause the release of the androgen hormones and these are they produce the androgenic and the anabolic effects the main hormone is the testosterone hormone which will cause the inhibition both at the level of the anterior pituitary and as well as the inhibition of the gnrh release so the feedback inhibition occurs in this condition in the case of females the fsh will cause the production will cause will stimulate the granulosa cells to produce the inhibin b again causing the feedback inhibition and LH will act on both granulosa and theca interna primarily on theca interna cells to cause the production of the androgens and the main one is the estrogen. So estrogen will cause the inhibition both at the level of the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus leading to the inhibition. In this way gonadotropins via the LH and FSH, they mediate their effect onto the reproductive function. Coming to a few uh, applied aspects, diseases of the anterior pituitary. Most common cause of the excessive production of the pituitary hormone is the tumors in the pituitary gland. And commonest of these tumors is the prolactinomas, followed by other types of the tumors like somatotrophs, corticotrophs, gonadotrophs and very rarely do we have the thyrotroph tumors. Uh, we can also have the small pituitary adenomas that cause the excessive trophic hormone production and the larger tumors which can lead to the, the direct effect, the pressure effect leading to the neurological symptoms. Now hypopituitary is what does it mean? It is a clinical syndrome of the deficiency in the pituitary hormone production which results from the disorders of the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus. 
And when we use the word panhypopituitarism, it usually means there is involvement of all the pituitary hormones, secretion and the synthesis. When pituitary hormone production is impaired, target gland hormone production automatically will be reduced because of the lack of the trophic stimulus. So when pen hypopituitarism occurs, it is going to affect all the major uh, target organs and they will not be stimulated to produce their own hormones. Hypopituitarism most common stressor is the infection. So the patients are maintained in this condition on the hormone replacement therapies for life unless the causative disorder is reversed by, the, uh, by treatment in the condition of hypopituitarism and most common cause is the pituitary adenomas. Uh, another important thing that we can remember is the Sheehan syndrome. It is the syndrome that occurs in the due to the hypopituitarism occurring at the postpartum level and this is primarily because of the necrosis of the gland. In this condition because of the absence of the normal secretions from the pituitary gland there will be severe hypertension because the mineralocorticoid secretion is abnormal or shock caused by the massive hemorrhage during or after the delivery patients have varying degrees of anterior pituitary hormone deficiency and it involves nearly all the hormones so in nutshell we have covered all the hormones and when we come on to the specific particular uh, gland, then we are going to talk about them in further details. Thank you.